Okay. I have seen uh, Bob Asio and Caleb Busire have caught my eye through the platform. So I'll give them the first opportunity. And then I'll come to you, Auk, after that. So maybe let's take those contributions. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Bona Chair, uh, Moseti, Leshan. Uh, it's interesting that you bring this up because uh, it also is something that has been on our minds as Impala, obviously because of a very elaborate uh, development program. And <laughs> in fact, for a long time, we've always had it in the grapevine. Well, you know, those kind of statements so that, uh, you know, this kind of motion would take cognizance of the work that goes into uh, the programs that we have in place because they cost quite a bit. And in fact, I think World, World Rugby says it should be 5,000 pounds, not even dollars, but we know that that's not tenable. Yeah, so I, I fully support uh, a motion that will allow clubs that have got uh, development programs in place to also be recognized for that. Um, yeah, while the amounts proposed may need to be reviewed and discussed further so that we can reach an amicable solution, I think this is something that should, would also encourage other clubs to, to have similar arrangements in place. And for those that don't and you know want to continue also, because you can't stop players from moving clubs. And the intention of having our academy program is so that the rug, rugby benefits as a whole, right? Yeah, so I, I like this motion. It's something that uh, I think would also work uh, in our favor. Yeah, so I'm all for it. We just need to review those amounts that, uh, that have been discussed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. I'd given an opportunity to Caleb Uh, through the chair. Yes. Okay, I'm 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 in support of the the proposal by Nakuru, particularly on the university side. Most of the universities we have over 25 universities playing rugby currently, which makes a huge junk of teams that play rugby in Kenya. And this motion would protect the universities that invest so much in these students. Some of the players, they come in through high schools. You find they have never played club rugby. And for the four years they're in campus, the university invests in the players in terms of training and also in terms of participation in tournaments and growing in, in, in the game as well. But once it comes to Transfers, now we know after four years, most of the guys move out of campuses and join clubs. But now the universities are not protected in that area because one, the, the major clubs like maybe Kenya Cup clubs, they sway the player to their side and there's nothing that you can do as a team to try and prevent that because it will seem as if you are, you are inhibiting the guy from advancing in his career, which is tough on universities. So in, in support, I would like to say that as universities or as DASTA, we are in support of this motion and hopefully all universities can support this motion so that we, we are protected in terms of the players that we contribute to the system and, and also the investment that we make in that regard, Asante. Uh, thank you, Bwana. Raymond, you can also cue me after Uka with through you. Uh, yes. Yes, Bwana Alka. Thanks, Chairman. Um, while it's best practice the world over to take cognizance of the development of players and to reward that, and not just in rugby as a Nakuru have stated, and even in other sports, um, two things stand out for me. One is what Bobby has brought up, the amounts, which might not be tenable if we strictly follow 
uh, what the World Rugby rules are. Secondly, for me, is the age factor um, of this. I think this, this um, needs to be relooked. And while we are okay with them, um, while we are okay with uh, saying that clubs that have developed players, just in the same way that players who have passed through any clubs are, uh, we take cognizant of, of, of the fact that uh, uh, some go into a club as raw players and um, are polished to the extent that they end up playing in the national team. And that's why we pay more for players who play in the national team. I think we need to relook this motion in that same light. Um, I tend to, I'd, I'd want to slightly differ with, with Caleb. Um, it's, it's the nature of universities that players will be in there for four years and move on. It's the role of universities to accommodate them there for those four years while they're doing their academics. But if we are going to put this as a rule uh, and with the ages within which we've said, uh, one of the easiest ways of circumventing this is just ensuring that if I see a good player from high school level, I just don't get him registered in a university. He can go and school at Desta or University of Nairobi, but be registered as a non-disc player. Yeah. Uh, and what will that what that will do is it will get some people just circumventing that avenue uh, of of um, of, uh, uh, of of paying a very punitive amount for this player. So again, from where I'm seated, I think the the numbers are a bit on the other side. I also think the age should be relooked. Um, and I think um, when everything is said and done, uh, we should just take cognizance of the natural way in which life is. You finish high school, you go to college for four years. Because if, if this is left um, um, unchecked, the biggest beneficiary of this will be universities for just one season, then we will come and get corners around it, and you will never get those players from, from, from high school. They will straight come and be registered in our clubs, and we will go around it, and in the end, it is those same universities that will suffer. So again, Buona Chairman, we need to relook the amounts, and we need to relook the age, uh, uh, the, the, the ages of these players that we are talking about from a development perspective. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll give uh, three other people so far to make contributions. I'll start with uh, uh, Max, Max Muniafu, followed by Philip, and then uh, George Mbai. And then I'll, I'll do another round because I've seen quite a lot of comments coming through. So Mindo and the rest, I'll, I'll come back to you as well. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, it's a good motion by Nakuru. And I think also what uh, Chair Nondi says makes a lot of sense. And uh, if we can be able to marry the two, uh, I think we can accept the motion and then get into modalities in a way that uh, does not uh, harm A, the, the buyers, and uh, B, the buyers, so that we have that middle line. Uh, his, his points are very good, and there's a middle line to it. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Uh, Philip? Chairman, yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to remind members that the regulations actually provide for compensation of development of clubs. In, in fact, if you look at regulation four of World Rugby, uh, the regulations are actually mirrored on regulation four. The question is, do, do affiliates ever read the Kenya Rugby Union regulations or do the affiliates ever adhere to these regulations. I'll give an example. How many clubs have registered uh, the contracts of their players at the union? That is one. Um, uh, I keep on hearing clubs talking about academies and, um, and uh, development of players. The regulations are very clear that any academy must be fully registered with the union. I remember, I think a year ago, there were requirements that were sent out for registration of an academy. And as far as I'm concerned, and correct me if I'm, no, I'm wrong, there is actually no club that has a registered academy with the union. So for me, we are actually putting the cart before the horse. Uh, we should actually endeavor to register these academies, and then we shall be able to quantify the investment. 
Otherwise, as what Chairman of Nodi says, we shall be holding players between the age of 17 and 24, hoping to cash in uh, on them as commodities in this market. We all know that um, um, the value is only as good as the market. Today, we put in regulations of transfer fees of minimum 50,000 uh, and maximum of 200,000. How many clubs to date have been able to even pay the transfer fees of 50,000? Very many clubs are struggling. And, and, and uh, we, should, we are actually in an amateur sport and should actually not look at this uh, game as a means to enriching ourselves as clubs. I think it is our due responsibility to develop players and allow them to flourish and play at whatever level they need to so that they can be, uh, they can in future contribute to the national team. For me, I think whatever figure, whatever figure is whatever put, figure is put uh, between 100 to 500, five, none of the clubs will be able to afford and what will happen is that these players will not be able to play anywhere. So uh, for me, I just think as much as we, we bring uh, some of these motions, we need to read the regulations. The regulations actually currently cover um, everything in regards to development of players. There is even equally compensation, which is comm commensurate to the economic ability of clubs in Kenya. So for me, I, I actually do not um, uh, think that uh, uh, this motion is changing anything in regards to the regulations. But the issue of figures actually is untenable and can actually not be brought. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think, George, you are next. Um, I think for me it is um, an issue, and uh, <clears throat> I'm happy Philip has brought it. Um, the motion seeks to adopt regulation four. I think uh, we must also be alive to procedure. Uh, and for me, what we can only amend or change is the KRU bylaws. So that from a starting point, the motion as submitted is unprocedural for lack of following the proper procedure. The bylaws, the KRU bylaws that introduced uh, transfer fees and material benefits, it's actually the law that you need to amend. So that uh, as Kenya Rugby Union, we cannot say we want to adopt regulation nine of the world rugby regulations. We can only force the Kenya rugby union to enforce and enforceability must be based on our local circumstance. Our local circumstance being the KRU bylaws, number one. So in terms of even looking at regulation for itself, if you look at 4.7.8, it says that the, that the law would be operational subject to appropriate regulations being in place. Yeah. I am happy that uh, that uh, Prof has mentioned buyer and buyers. You yourself, Chairman, have been a chairman of the club. The proposed amount uh, up to one thousand pounds. We are not very good mathematicians and we have been home since March. So I'm not sure if I can able to calculate. But off the top of my head, you're talking about 150, 200,000. Now, are we also considering that we will be looking at an annual compensation fee? Because even as you read Regulation 4, it talks about annual compensation fee. A foot of this one. So that for a club like Mwamba, if I am to compensate Cabras 150,000, it means I'm not able to honor my Kenya Cup fixture away to Cabras because it costs me 150,000. These regulations are there, yes. 
but we must accept that, yes, our local circumstance cannot support it. And even if the, we are we to amend the KRU bylaws, I'm happy Auka has mentioned that number one, there must be approved licensed training centers. First of all, the, the age is very specific in the regulation. It is 17 to 23. A player who's 17 years old is still in high school. By the time he's, in, he's 23, he's probably in uh, doing his second or third year. Now, are we looking at what we are calling development? Development is not picking a player from uh, Laser Hill, bringing him to Mwamba, allowing him to play um, uh, two or three Kenya Cup games. He's selected to the national team, and now we say we have developed the player. I mean, we must look at what we, re we are really talking about in terms of development. So that we are supposed to look at, first of all, your facilities, a licensed development center. Regulation 4 also talks about a high performance center. If the Kenya Rugby Union does not have a high performance center, how would a club say that they have a high performance center and therefore other clubs who are getting players from their, from their, from their club are, are subject to Regulation 4? So let's look at what we're talking about in terms of licensing. So that KRU, before you even look at amendment of that law, KRU must start licensing. Number one. Number two, how many clubs actually comply? And it's good to be specific. Even as you talk about transfers, we've had controversial transfers uh, in the last two seasons. And I'm happy as Kenya Cup clubs, we've been able to sit down and whip our members, you know, to, to respect the bylaws, but also to be reasonable. I have, for example, uh, lost a player who is going to Strathmore University, but he's going on a scholarship. Would I as a chairman say that I'm looking for 50,000? Would I as a chairman say that I'm looking for 150,000? If you ask me, the spirit of the amendment is number one, emotive, and number two, very emotional. Yeah, so that even as we legislate, let us not legislate for a specific case. Let us legislate for the benefit of the game. And let us legislate as we look at our specific circumstances. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman. Bangla, we can't hear you. Chairman. Bangla, yes. you lost completely. Now we can. Start Chairman. again. Okay. Chairman. Turn that one off. Turn it off. Chairman. Yes, Philip. Uh, allow me to also raise the... Oh, sorry, Philip. Philip, we, are, we have an order. People have been waiting to contribute. Oh, I have sorry. at least six people who are on the queue and uh, you have made your contribution which we've had and i don't want it to be a, a rebuttal otherwise we won't leave so let's hear the other clubs who have not said anything today and uh, and at least uh, get also a different perspective i think you've also posted on the group something which is quite informative but at this moment i want to invite uh, mindo uh, george sagini and uh, ben amboko in that order. Uh, Chawan, thank you. I think if, uh, these are very, very important and uh, valid point raised by both uh, pro proponents and, uh, and opponents. We want and we wish to, as well as, as much as possible, to encourage uh, clubs to have uh, some sort of uh, player development and academy centers. I mean, this, we are very, 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 very much uh, the heart and center of um, uh, rugby development. However, looking at uh, the motion raised by our brothers, our older brothers, uh, Tom Fry, we feel that at this point in time, the best way forward, and without belaboring uh, a lot of the points raised by Chairman Jijo and Aoka, the best way forward is to uh, set up a working group that will look towards establishing a mutual recognition of uh, of the issues raised 
not only on um, academies and, and uh, development centers, but also on player transfers. Because this, um, we probably need to look at conflating the two. In terms of one, um, can we have a mutual recognition of what player development is? Um, define what resources uh, are because for a club at Nakuru, we look at the you know the very very big investment they've done in uh, in um, in mini rugby, uh, which has which which I must say is a very big uh, flagship on their on their side. Um, for a club like uh, Oilers, for example. Uh, we look at the financial aspect for a club, but like um, um, Nondis, for example, I know they've had, they've been putting, uh, they've been sending coaches to Upper Hill and Agoreti, for example, and, you know, and we all have our own different ways of investing in players. So we probably need to define what resources are. Uh, we probably also need to define uh, what are the transfer regulations for players who are below 17 and above 23. There also remains a, a very big contentious issue. So my view, Chairman, will be we get a working group, define all these issues, and probably come up with a, you know, um, a, a document that uh, espouses you know, all, a rec recognition of all these investments, recognition of, this, of all these issues uh, that concern player transfers and academies. Thank you. Thanks, Bindo, for that contribution. I'll, I've noted it and we'll come back to it. Uh, let's hear from Sagimi Amboko. And I've also just want to give an opportunity to uh, Jason Homeboys. He, I think I want to hear different voices as well. So we'll also hear Jason. Sagimi. OK, thanks, Sagimi. Uh, Amboko, Ben, from Kitale. Okay, I think we are, we are, we are, Coming, maybe Jason, you may have a different perspective. Let's not repeat what has been said. If there's any new contribution that's uh, on the matter. How's it, gents? Hope everyone's doing all right. Um, just quickly, when I need you guys to also understand when it comes to appraising the value of the developed player, um, you need to look at the detail of development as well. What is the actual development taking place? A guy that's been to a club for three years and I see him because I like his body type and I take him, I develop him further. Who's actually developing him? Um, do we have a set standards that says a guy that's able to reach X, Y, and Z standards in the gym, on the field, in his skills, in his position, that's considered a developed player or that's the progress that's been made when he entered the academy, when he entered the club, where did he start and where did he end up before the next club tried to buy him? Because that places huge emphasis on the value of the player. The guy can rock up to a club, play there for two years, and all he's learned is to pass. But he doesn't understand the game. He doesn't understand rugby. Now, am I supposed to pay five thousand dollars for that? Well, I now still have to develop him. So when you come, when you guys write down your your values on transfers and development, and you talk about all this development, you also need to look at the quality of the development. How do you measure it? Um, because you can't just have a guy rock up with a ridiculous amount, saying you have to pay for it, and then you're going to develop him more anyway. Uh, take props for example you're going to bring I like a prop that I see at let's take a brass all I like about him is his body shape I still need to teach him how to scrum so how does that determine the value of the player um, yes he's been at Cabras for two or three years and I'm using Cabras because Philip and I know each other well um, does that mean that he has actually been developed or does it mean that how does that uh, contribute to the value that we have to pay for the player does that make sense so that's something you guys really need to consider in terms of okay. uh, valuation of the player. Uh, thanks, thanks, Jason. Very good contributions. I think the last one I'll, I'll give that uh, I'd mentioned, uh, actually, Jason was the last contributor. 
I I raised my hand. Oh, oh, so, oh chairman. Ah, I was I was looking for your name. I mean, there are papers all over. Sorry. Please, Chairman of Mombasa, Karibu. Uh, thank you, Governor Chairman. I've been following this conversation. Uh, and uh, maybe just to contribute on that part. Uh, in, uh, as Mombasa, we've seen so many players pass through here and go away. I think also as we are talking about this particular uh, topic, we should also consider the personal interest of the players. Because today we, we, we have very young players coming out of colleges and you see also their guardians, their parents also come to play. So, for example, somebody has, we, has been raised and bred here and maybe has got an opportunity to go and study in, in a different, uh, let's say, in Nairobi. You know, as a club, really, we also have to consider the personal interest of the players. And uh, it, it's also a very key, key part because you cannot determine the future of somebody. Today, if he is destined to move to a different location, basically you cannot deter him. him. So we need to also to put this into consideration. Thanks, thanks, Chairman. I I want to make this proposal uh, to the meeting. Uh, this matter seems to be quite weighty, and there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of uh, of legal um, legal ramifications, uh, which uh, which uh, I think need to be considered further. I, I take cognizance of the contribution of Mindo to help us see how do we reach a uh, middle ground, and also George Bayer's contribution on. Uh, Really, what we need to be looking at is the the KRU regulation, which talks about transfers, player development, licensed training centers, all of which have been anchored upon, uh, firstly, World Rugby regulations, but also, secondly, an understanding among the clubs as to what is the, uh, the pricing or value that uh, we are putting on transfers. So I would like to maybe propose as we go forward, I think no one disagrees we need to relook the whole transfer matter. But I think that working group would be quite important to come up with proposals and uh, relook at that framework. Uh, and then we can be able to have uh, a stakeholder meeting to go through this and agree on, on the best way forward so that by the time we make changes to the KRU regulations on this subject, then it's a position that is uh, that is harmonized. Chairman, I, I support the I support your proposal, mm. and uh, if I may go further, I think since I I, <clears throat> I I indicated that the motion is very personal. I would propose uh, Leshan, um, you know, as a, as a chair. Uh, and if if it also makes sense, then uh, uh, if we can have maybe Philip as co-chair or secretary, being the Man City of Kenya, <laughs> <laughs> the people who would probably suffer the biggest. Yeah, so that I propose Leshan actually on, on, on the Philips of the light touch. I propose Leshan as chair, and probably then what would make sense is maybe co opt, um, uh, as we've always done, co opt um, maybe a few Kenya Cup people, uh, nationwide universities, and probably a director or someone from the secretariat. Then we can move it forward. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, it's important for affiliates also to own uh, these processes. So I'm happy with that proposal. And maybe uh, working through the, we already have club representatives sitting in the, in, the, in, the, in the fixtures committee. So we'll just ask them out of their respective leagues to maybe give us one or two nominees. 
because uh, I want us to to move forward to the other agenda. We could ask them for one or two nominees and constitute not a very large group, but one of technical people. And I think we shouldn't restrict it only to to club chairman. Uh, it would be interesting to have other stakeholders in the game. I'm just thinking the contributions uh, Jason has made are, are quite are quite in order when you look at it from a coaching perspective. And that can help us just think through this and come up with a, a framework that works. So I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take it back to our fixtures committee. And from the board, uh, the director of fixtures will be part of that committee as well. And uh, there'll be other... Uh, other members so that uh, this can work. So let's close it at, at that point. And uh, Thank you, Chairman, before you close. Yes. Is this really fixtures or development? You know, it's regulation. So because it affects transfers, transfers, we normally handle it under fixtures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious, just needed clarity on that. Yeah, but again, we can put features yeah. and development. It's, it's Chair, um, I'd also like to suggest we give it a, a timeline, eh? yes, um, so that we we come up with something within a time frame. Not not have it maybe at the next AGM as uh, uh, as in by the next AGM or whatever. Between this period, we we know by a certain period there's a report that has come through, which we can look at and uh, give feedback on then adaptive it's acceptable to all of us yeah that that's acceptable i think we'll we'll just consult internally and maybe by the end of the meeting guide you on uh, what is a realistic time frame but i think we should try to do this uh, pretty soon okay thank you thank you thank you for those contributions uh, now, I want us to move to the, the next motion. Uh, this is a motion from uh, uh, Nondescripts. And so I'll ask uh, Auka to just present this to the affiliates. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Chairman. Um, I'll not go through this motion because I did exactly this in the last AGM. I think there's been a huge failure uh, on the part of the board or the secretariat um, or both, whichever way we want to look at it. We sat in a meeting where we, in the last uh, AGM where this was brought up. And I think the, um, the um, verdict of that meeting then was that this will be taken out and we will have um, a committee put together to just thrash this out and uh, polish it up and then see, uh, bring it back to an SGM within 30 days. Uh, and here we are 365 days later, um, nothing has happened. So again, I, I want to believe that the members have, have gone through this motion. Uh, and I want to make something very clear before I go on, that the primary objective of this motion was just to take care of um, governance, um, at KRU um, and just get our house in order in terms of how we run the game. We've always, I've, I've always been of the opinion that if you look um, at a club like KCB, for example, uh, and the kind of um, resources they put into the game, uh, Gijo just mentioned um, Cabras in the same light um, as a um, Man City, if you look at some of these clubs, the kind of effort they put into the game, uh, it is sometimes unfair uh, that we come and sit on the table and um, uh, they have the same stay with uh, other affiliates who are not putting in as, as much resources as they are. That said, I think one year down the line, there's a couple of issues that we need to relook as a whole in, a, in, in as far as this motion is concerned. So if we look at what we had proposed as an electoral body, um, or rather the vetting committee, um, or an integrity committee, um, looking at this motion as it is right now and the proposal that we get um, um, the affiliates concerned to put this together, 
maybe it's a bit unfair to ask um, AUKA to sit in a vetting committee uh, leading up to an election or the affiliation of clubs while he has an interest perhaps in being a chairman uh, a few years down the line. I think what will then end up happening is him aligning or trying to align uh, with who he seems to be uh, on his side. Um, I think we should look at maybe having an independent electoral board. So we, we, I, I, we need to relook that particular proposal that had been put on the table. Uh, secondly, in as far as governance is concerned and in alignment with the Sports Act, um, KRU has six uh, seats for, for directors. And at the moment, um, I believe all six elected are men and the two co-opted members of the board who really are board members but have no say. And maybe that speaks to what Jijo was talking about saying that we need to hear their voices. Uh, they have no say in terms of voting. Maybe that needs to be entrenched now in the constitution. And why don't we then take the six positions and say that two of them must be of the other gender. Uh, in this case is uh, I'm talking from an African perspective where genders are only two. I know in other uh, setups, genders might be slightly more than two. So um, can we then entrench it in the constitution that uh, at least a third of those seats, which is uh, two out of the six um, are given to ladies or in the case where rugby will have developed substantially, uh, you never know, it's maybe the ladies will be sitting in the board and the men will be asking for two seats to sit on the board. That said also, we need to take cognizance of the clubs that have also invested in, in ladies team. Um, while rugby as a whole is really um, pushing that agenda forward. And I think we don't need to be left behind. So while I talked about clubs or while the motion talked about clubs that have um, uh, sites in, in Kenya Cup, sites in Eric Shale development sites, um, we need to also take uh, quite some action, deliberate action, to see how we reward or we uh, take into recognition clubs that have women's team. They are also a big contributor to the game and say, how do we also um, take care of that in the game? Um, then there's the issue of the boards and the secretariat mandate. As I've mentioned, for example, uh, this matter one year later has not been addressed after we sat in an uh, AGM and, and, uh, and brought it to the members' attention. Do we need to relook what the role of the board is vis-a-vis -vis what the role of the secretariat it is? Is there a conflict, for example, with the role of the secretary of the union vis-a-vis -vis the role of the CEO? Um, we need to see um, if these issues... Um, uh, have conflict and how we can address them. And I think we just need to get the secretariat um, and the execution of the mandate of the board uh, being a bit more efficient than it is at the moment. Uh, in my opinion, some of these uh, come from the issue of um, the roles that uh, have to be played by the, two, by the two bodies. Then looking at the board as it is, is it taking care of all sectors of the game. We have players, we have referees. Um, I've, I've, I've mentioned that before. We have schools, we have universities. Um, does this also need to be taken into consideration? All that said, for me, it looks that the motions that we've put, the, the proposal that uh, has been, was put to, to the membership last year is quite substantive, is, is, is one that really looks at the core uh, of, of, of the game, the constitution that we have at the moment. Uh, I don't think it would be fair again to sit in a sitting like this, especially at the tail end of the meeting, uh, when I know Gijo, for example, wants to go and have Balozi to now say that we will uh, have this discussion. Um, I think this needs to be put through a substantive process where we involve all the membership to look at uh, some of these issues. Uh, I believe there are some very um, core and, uh, and, uh, and well-aligned issues. For example, the criteria that we set forward in terms of um, talking about 
what we need for, for, for members to join the board or for clubs to be affiliated. I think some of them are really in very good light and we need to um, adopt them. But I also, like I've said, I think it is imperative that a motion of this substance uh, be put through the, it's like a referendum of a constitution, be put through the membership uh, of the game. Uh, we, we, we get a committee to go around and get what are the, uh, what is the thinking of the rest of the membership to polish this up, to get uh, the lawyers to legally put this in the correct language and, and in the correct frame with all the commas in the right place. And then call an SGM. And I think one of the things that we should take out of this meeting is the timeline within which we should call an SGM. If we say maybe 60 days or 90 days from now and say that we will come back, we will have talked to the membership of the game, we'll have gotten the opinions of the rest of the members and we will sit down and polish this document and then bring it for adoption uh, by, by the membership of, 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 of the game. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Auka, for, I think there are a lot of uh, thought provoking points that you've brought, uh, some of which uh, are not even contained in the initial motion. And uh, I want to allow very short contributions. I think I already have three people uh, requesting for that. And uh, we need to close in the next uh, few minutes, but because the move of the motion has already given us a way forward, we don't need to speak extensively on this motion today. And I think that uh, other than just having even an SGM eventually, we probably need that committee to do a draft and then we must have what I'd call a stakeholders meeting to go through this and get input and consensus on some of the tricky issues. So by the time we're coming to an SGM, which there's no reason why we can't have it at the end of this year, in, in my view, uh, and then uh, uh, move forward on, on that basis. So I, I'll just invite uh, Chege, Leslie and, uh, and uh, George. And please, let's not repeat what has been said, but there could be a new perspective to the, to the motion, because I can see already there's a lot of support for forming a, a working group, which is the way I think this is headed. Sorry, Chair, I can't raise my hand, but I put a notice for you on the chat. Eh? Uh, yeah, yes. I put a notice for you there, so please uh, let me have something to say also. You know, you're the senior most here, so I'll give you the first opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Very, very, very briefly, Chen. Sorry to the others that I've cut. I, uh, interesting motion, but I would go beyond uh, giving just three votes to Kenya Cup. Let us, uh, because the key thing here is under 21 women and age grade. Let us set up uh, specific criteria and, if necessary, align them to votes. Because uh, a lot of teams have age grade. We, I have four age grade teams. We are working on a women team, and we also have an under 21. So let's break it up. It's not just Kenya Cup, but the whole country. But let's cast it in, in, in stone so that we know who deserves how many votes. Otherwise, by 2070 AD, Chairman, some Kenya Cup teams might have 30 votes. Some others will have 15. Others will have 12. Let us set the criteria in stone where those votes are concerned. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. I'm avoiding people going to contribute on the motion because we already have a way forward. But I'll welcome the contribution of uh, Chege, Leslie, and George. I think, Chairs, by your guidance, uh, and as per what Prof has said, my only concern was uh, the restriction to three votes to Kenya Cup. We also have nationwide and uh, other levels that have more than one team. But as, uh, since the move of the motion has already said that uh, we don't need to pass it now, it needs to go to a committee, I think I'm okay with that, Chair. Okay. Uh, Chairman, if I may. <clears throat> yes, George. Uh, I support the motion. 
I, however, disagree with the mover on the way forward. <laughs> uh, again, this is a procedural issue. The last time we were here, we said we form a committee. Some of us may have kept quiet because the last AGM, remember, had uh, political connotations. Yeah, as we were debating motions, others were 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 were, were, were doing cheers and give, taking shots of whatever they were taking because some had won, some had lost. <laughs> However, look at the constitution. It is an amendment to the constitution, and it's very simple. At the end of the day, it should not be boiled down to the discussion like the one we had in the Senate yesterday where we are saying we are losing or we are gaining. Let us look at the intention of the motion. Why is it that Kenya Cup teams were given two votes then and Nationwide had one and the other affiliates had one? Let us look at best practices <clears throat> wild over. I know who has spoken about investment. I know who has spoken about um, you know, uh, we, we get to a situation where before an election, we are looking at a situation where we're asking ourselves who has honored fixtures and who hasn't. In this day and age, we are not supposed to be discussing those things. In fact, personally, I would want to introduce a, an amendment to the constitution that anyone who does not meet their threshold of 75% should be de-affiliated because then there's no reason if you have an employee at work who doesn't show up at, to, to work for, for three months, then you can't say, at where katu hapo, tutawana, tutawata tukuangaliange tu, we look at you then at some point we'll decide what to do. You know, so in terms of the seriousness, in terms of a way forward, we're not just saying, because Kenya Cup have been given three, what, let's give nationwide two. No, we are asking ourselves questions. In terms of, in terms of investment, one, in terms of development, yeah, and we are not belittling because uh, my good friend Chege knows that I, I can get players from his, more often than not, we get players from those small teams, the purported small teams. I probably get, I've gotten two players from Embu, you know. So in terms of, yes, Prof says we'll get to a place where Mwamba has 30 votes. But let's ask ourselves, where, how would Mwamba get to 30 votes? For example, you are saying Impala has a, has, a, has, a, has a development center. Does everybody else have a development center? The answer is no. Impala have a women's team. Yeah. How many players does Impala have in the national team? It's purely based on, on their effort, on their development. Of course, sometimes it is based on uh, that guy, my guy. But in most cases, under, under normal sports, it is based on your investment. It is based on what you're doing in terms of the sport. And that's why I keep saying, I don't belittle any other team, but go to South Africa. Now we are back to, uh, like I mentioned, in New Zealand rugby is being played. Why do, why do we only see every other weekend? Why do we only see um, Highlanders and Crusaders? Are we saying there are no other clubs in, the, in New Zealand? They're there. But even, even in terms of viewership, even in terms of, you know, and uh, we had these discussions through and through when Bamba TV came on board. We said, this money was meant for Kenya Cup teams, but we are considering that we cannot live on our own. We have our brothers and sisters who we have to keep pulling up. So at the end of the day, as much as we may want to say we'll form a committee, eh? again, people think that, and it's very unfortunate that we must always think about elections. Aoka has made it very clear, it's all about governance. Yeah, it's about governance, it's about structures, it's about ensuring that the game remains at the level where our forefathers, the people who enacted that two votes and one vote, there was a, there's a reason why they did that. It's because, and unfortunately, and with due respect, I know we are the ones who are saying that uh, we give the ladies a chance to speak I mean, we live in a society where equality, you know, this thing of equality has gone to a level where uh, 
it's as good as uh, you bring the bread to the house. But uh, where I come from in my village, even if ma the madam brings the bread to the house, then I must be seen to be the one carrying it, even if I didn't buy it. You know, my, my brothers and my uncles must see me to be carrying the bread, even if I didn't buy it. You know, it's, it's purely based on an organizational approach as opposed to purely political and an election based. Elections are four years of how many years away from us now, but we must look at structure and how we want to move forward. Thanks, Chairman. So I disagree with Auka. My view would have been, it is the second time we're going through this thing of uh, the, the motion, uh, the committee, uh, but probably following from my uh, my my Chairman Wanjala, if we choose to go to the direction of the committee, I propose that the committee be formed immediately and within three months, we give a report that would be adopted in terms of, um, of amendment of that, of that specific section. And even as you do that, my proposal to the committee has already been given, the affiliate. Some of us have been here since 3 p.m. These are the things we're talking about. We are here discussing rugby issues other people have no business. They're probably, you know, trying to beat the 7 p.m. Uh, itari, itari, itari curfew as we discuss rugby issues. But when we come to elections, they arrive at the, at the rugby union at 2 p.m. on the day preceding the election. So we must look at these issues like that. Thank you, Chair. Dangi and mute. Chairman and mute. Chairman, Chairman, Chairman you need to unmute. So, sorry, I'll say, uh, I'll give on Deki just one minute. We are not uh, deliberating uh, the merits of the motion. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think uh, you're leaving me out. Eh? And, uh, me an uh, and the reason is we, we, are, we are running out of time. So I'll give you one minute. So yes, at one Mr. minute, Chair. I'll just stop you. Okay, Chair. please go. Go for it. Uh, uh, okay, first of all, um, I would, I was, Thank I wanted you, to invite. I think I was. Uh, uh, excuse sorry, me. sorry. I gave Ondieki yes, the first opportunity. Then I'll give Mangali. So let's have Ondieki first. Okay, Chairman. I. Sorry, sorry. I, I please. I think um, it's okay. It's okay, Chairman. I get you. Yeah. I want to agree with Aoka in part of his motion, which I think the working group should look at. We should sort this menace of the position of the CEO and the position of the secretary to the board. I want to believe this is where the conflict has been and some of the decisions have been stolen. So I support the idea of going the committee way, but again, I want to agree with Mbai. Let's form the committee today or tomorrow and in three months time, let's move forward. I think waiting for another one year will not make sense to us. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, Bonacha. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Uh, mine was just to invite you to make a determination on uh, the procedurability of um, the motion before us by um, non-descripts, it being that um, it was not uh, circulated uh, 14 days prior to all the members. So could you make a determination on that and give us a way forward? Okay. Uh, I, I think that uh, we have uh, actually moved much ahead uh, in terms of getting a way forward. It would have been very easy for us as the board to say uh, this maybe didn't happen, etc. But I think the affiliates have uh, have, uh, have shown immense maturity and, and understanding. And with the solution coming from the affiliates, uh, the whole issue about the legality and what have you can be deliberated on at that committee level. 
So now, in terms of us moving forward, I agree with uh, Mindo's uh, suggestion that maybe instead of splitting and having too many committees and, and the like, and why don't we continue and expand the mandate of uh, the earlier committee to include this particular motion? Uh, we are also proposing that uh, uh, whoever chairs the committee, Lashan has already been nominated, and we are proposing that he, he chairs this committee and uh, that we work with a time frame of uh, 90 days within which uh, we can then have a, a stakeholders meeting. I believe there'll be a lot of issues to for people to ventilate about and get consensus. But at the end of the day, I think it's important for us as a game to ultimately work together so that the SGM becomes a formality. The last time we tried to do the constitution, it, it failed because of uh, machinations. But I, I hope if we all come working with the same end in mind, we'll be able to achieve that, uh, that objective. So with Auka having uh, uh, also brought this motion, I would propose that uh, he deputizes uh, uh, Leshan in this committee and uh, so that the two movers of the motion are already in that particular committee. And uh, so, uh, yeah. so I think if if we can adopt that as the resolution, because now we have two two chairmen, uh, call it leading that process, and we'll work with them. But within the next 14 days at most, we should have the committee uh, fully set up and uh, ready to kickstart work on this so that we can iron out these issues once and for all. That's our proposal. Chairman, why 14 days? Are they going into isolation? <laughs> what is your proposal, Gijo? That, that was a light touch, but 14 days is okay. <laughs> okay, very well. Okay, I think then that is that for the motions for today. And uh, I want us to maybe invite uh, a representative uh, from Rugby Africa, John Bosco Mwamba. He, I'm sure he's known to, to all of you. I'll just invite him to make a few comments as we head towards closing the meeting. Over to you, Bosco. Okay. Thank you, Gangla. Uh, guys, sorry, I won't take a lot of your time. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, I, uh, please receive uh, greetings from the president of Rugby Africa, Ned Babu, the EXCO, and uh, the staff of uh, Rugby Africa. Um, Kenya and Rugby Africa enjoys a lot of uh, good relationship. Uh, Kenya was earmarked to run or to host a couple of uh, events this year. That was uh, the under 20 and uh, the EXCO meeting was supposed to be in Nairobi, but due to the pandemic that uh, was, uh, didn't happen. But I'm sure uh, when the situation returns to normal, uh, Kenya will still get their chance to, to host uh, a number of, of events. Um, my attention has been just uh, drawn to uh, one area. I know Gangla introduced uh, me and said that I do a lot of work in uh, training and education, but I also do some work in relation to development. And this question of affiliation of clubs, um, of course, uh, clubs must respect the criteria set by, 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 the, by the Minister of Sports. But again, I also want to let you know that uh, the it is a uh, grow, growing the game is a is a strategic um, um, objective of world rugby, and I believe it's still the same for for Kenya rugby. So what I would uh, like to encourage clubs to do, because the chairman has said that the board is willing 
to allow as many clubs as possible affiliate as long as they meet the set criteria. So, uh, look, Kenya has been as ranked number two for the longest time since the Get Into Rugby program was initiated. That was in 2012. So Kenya has been ranked uh, second to, to South Africa in, in, in Africa, which means then there, are, there is a lot of young stars who have been introduced into the game. And so four or five years from now, somebody might ask, where are these players? But if you're able to show that there has been growth in terms of the number of clubs, so you had 50 clubs and now you have 60 or 70, whatever number, then that shows that there has been growth. And then that will help the union to justify that the investment that was done in introducing these youngsters into the game is what now we are seeing in this, in this club. So we've been able to transition those players from just being participants to actually being players who are now participating in a club. So I would ask clubs to really work hard, meet the criteria, and ensure that they get affiliated to, uh, to Kenya rugby. And uh, point number two is, um, uh, with your permission, Chairman, um, Kenya was selected to pilot a program of registration of players uh, in Africa. Uh, in this region, it was Kenya and Uganda. And uh, I've seen a lot of correspondence between the Secretariat and the clubs, uh, encouraging clubs to really do their bit because uh, the information was sent to them and they were supposed to you know, to load uh, or to populate those forms so that uh, you know, they can be sent to the person responsible. And uh, that, I think Kenya is lagging behind all other countries that were selected to pilot uh, have done pretty well. So I'm sure Kenya was selected. There was a good reason why Kenya was selected to pilot that program. So I would just like to take advantage of this meeting because I'm sure there's an, quite a number of, uh, in fact, all these people here are affiliated to clubs and they, they work with clubs. So please, let's just uh, do our bit and make sure that uh, information is uh, sent to uh, the secretariat so that they can uh, forward it to the relevant person for the, for the purpose of um, um, ensuring that that, uh, that, that that registration system is, is in place because the only way we are going to measure growth is through numbers. Numbers show potential and they show growth. So if we are going to show that we, we had 50,000 players in 2020 and uh, 2022, we have uh, 60, 70 or 100,000 players, then it shows that the actually growth is taking place in Kenya and the support and the relationship that exists between all these organizations, Rugby Africa, or Rugby, the IOC and so on, will actually come back and benefit uh, our union. Thank you very much, uh, Gangla. Uh, thank you, uh, Bo Bosco, for those uh, comments. I think it's good when the affiliates also hear it from a different voice. And uh, please send again our warm regards to, to President Babu. And uh, we really appreciate the support he's given us as, uh, as Kenya Rugby Union. And uh, we'll work on these things to ensure that uh, we, we, we are top and uh, yeah, in, in terms of whatever activities we are doing. So uh, I think I want to now bring the meeting to a close uh, and uh, I want to appreciate all the affiliates who uh, made it for the meeting today. And uh, also we had our guests, uh, the observers, and uh, I also want to appreciate the, the members of the board uh, who work tirelessly uh, for this game. Uh, a lot of times people just see the, the end product, whether it's a, a test match or Kenya playing, but there's a lot of work that happens in the, in the background to try and ensure that uh, we're in the right track. I'd also very much want to appreciate our our team at the Secretariat, uh, led by Tio. Uh, we have McKenna, we have Penina, who's now looking after uh, finance. We have uh, uh, Mwanja, Judy, and, and all of them. Uh, because uh, uh, being at Kerry is very tough. Uh, it's not an easy place to work, uh, uh, but they are always very positive. And I think they go over the call of duty to ensure that uh, things actually work in the union. So. We really appreciate the contribution that uh, they make to the game. 
And uh, in closing, uh, I'm sure you're all uh, keen to know when uh, rugby will return. Uh, the sad thing is I don't have the answer today, but I think we continue to engage government and there'll soon be pronouncements on, on the way forward. And uh, after that, we'll be able to again sit and engage with stakeholders to see what's the best way forward. Uh, there are a number of faces here also who have been coming on to the webinars, which uh, our secretariat has been coordinating. And we've seen some good responses and we've tried to, to vary the topics uh, ranging from administration, coaching, and even officiating and medical as well. So I want to encourage you to continue to attend those webinars. It helps us keep in touch and it also helps us learn from each other. So with those uh, uh, comments, I just want to close the meeting and uh, to thank you all for uh, your attendance today and to encourage you to continue to stay safe and hopefully we'll meet on the, on the pitch again. Saturdays without rugby is just not, not the same, but uh, we hope that uh, we'll overcome this COVID so that we can resume our normal lives. Asante sana, uh, dear affiliates. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.